Hello, welcome to part 4, which is the final part of this lesson on the SUVAT equations. We're going to take a look at the equation which is on the screen, b squared equals u squared plus 2as. We'll start with a simple example of using the equation. Then we'll look at the derivation of the equation. We'll do some problem solving using the equation. And then because this is the final part of the lesson on the SUVAT equations, we'll do a, a quick review of the SUVAT equations. You will need a pen, paper and calculator to get the most out of this lesson, so if you need to go and get them, you can pause the video now. Word of warning, there will be some algebra and arithmetic involved, so be prepared. Let's start with a simple example. A stone is thrown upwards at a speed of 4 metres a second over a well. The bottom of the well is 7 metres below the point from which the stone is thrown. At what velocity does the stone hit the bottom of the well? We tell the value for g, we can ignore air resistance, there's the equation we're going to use. It often helps for these sorts of problems to draw a diagram to clarify in your own mind what is happening. So on the right hand side, here's a suitable diagram. U is marked, the path of the stone goes up, it's going to come down, then it's going to go down the well. It's going to end up 7 metres below where it started from. OK, time for you to do something. Pause the video, see if you can work out the velocity when the stone hits the bottom of the well. Let's go over this. We've got to be very careful about getting the signs, the plus and minuses, correct. If we use the normal sign convention, upwards is positive, downwards is negative. U will be plus, 4 metres a second. G acceleration will be minus 9.8 meters per second squared because gravity acts downwards and the displacement will be minus 7 meters because the stone ends up 7 meters below its starting point. Or we could have used the opposite sign convention we could have said downwards is positive upwards is negative. If we did that we would have a set of values as shown in blue that would give a consistent a correct result, the data would be consistent. But make sure you get your plus and minuses the right way around. I'm going to stick to the normal sign convention as shown in yellow, that's how we'll do the rest of the problem. All we have to do is substitute the values into the equation. And I've shown the working there, I won't go through the details. We end up with v is the square root of 153.2. And square roots have two values, positive and negative. So the velocity could be plus 12.4 meters per second or minus 12.4 meters per second. And of course with our downwards negative convention the answer would be v is minus 12.4 meters per second. It's a downwards velocity. We will just ignore the positive solution. Let's take a look at where this equation we're using comes from. The equation is shown on the top left, in yellow. We can derive it, all we need is some algebra, using the equations shown in blue on the top, and this relationship which I hope you recognize from algebra. v plus u into v minus u is v squared minus u squared. It's worth you having a go at this for yourself. So see if you can prove the equation in yellow Use, using the other equations shown. Pause and have a go now. Let's go through it. Start with the top middle equation. Can we get an expression for u plus v? Well, if you multiply both sides by 2 and then divide both sides by t, you'll get 2s over t equals v plus u, same as u plus v. Look at the top right hand equation. Can, uh, I want an expression for v minus u. And if we rearrange the top right hand equation, at equals v minus u. Now, let's 
do something clever, let's multiply v plus u by v minus u. And v plus u into v minus u is, of course, because v plus, v plus u is 2s over t, and v minus u is at, we've got this equation, which we can expand to give v squared minus u squared is 2as, the t's cancel. Rearrange that, and we end up with the equation we were trying to prove. If you want to check that, pause the video and read through that. All we needed was simple algebra. Let's do some problem solving. There will be two problems to have a go at. Question 1. A small plane accelerates uniformly at 1.5 meters per second squared from rest along a runway. The minimum speed required for takeoff is 150 kilometers per hour. Question part A. Convert 150 kilometers per hour to meters per second. We're going to have to do that so we can use our SUVAT equation with the acceleration in meters per second squared. We can't work, we can't mix kilometers per hour and meters per second squared. So part one, change to meters per second. And then the second part of the question is find the minimum length of the runway which is simply the, the distance the plane has to travel to reach the takeoff speed. Pause the video, see if you can do that for yourself. Let's go through this. 150 kilometers per hour. Well, there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So I've got to multiply 150 kilometers by 1,000. That's 150,000 meters. And an hour is 3,600 seconds. So I've got to divide by 3,600. And if we do that, we get 41.67 meters per second. The second part is just to find the runway length, which is the distance the plane travels to reach the takeoff speed. So the final velocity is 41.67, so we want v squared. Because u, the initial velocity, is 0, the equation just becomes v squared equals 2as. u squared is 0. So we've got 41.67 squared is 2 times 1.5 times s. And when we solve that and round it to two significant figures, the same as the data supplied, we get 580 meters. So the runway must be at least 580 meters long. So the plane has enough distance to reach the takeoff speed. Let's do one more question, which is a harder one. Question two, a car with a uniform acceleration passes point A at 10 meters per second and passes point B at 20 meters per second. How fast was it travelling when it was midway between A and B? You may instinctively think 15 metres per second, but that's not the correct answer. Pause the video, read it through again, and have a go. Let's work this out. Let's call the distance between A and B, which we don't know, x. Let x equal distance between A and B. Let's think about the journey from A to B and use our equation. V squared is 20 squared, that's the velocity at point B. U squared, the velocity at A squared, is 10 squared. 2AS. Well, we don't know A and we don't know S. In fact, I've decided to call the distance X. So we can say 20 squared is 10 squared plus 2AX. And we can get, get an expression for x. x will be 20 squared minus 10 squared over 2a, which is 400 minus 100 over 2a. 300 over 2a is 150 over a. And we've got a relationship between x and a. And we'll be able to use that to help us answer the problem. Let's think about the journey from a to the midway point, sort of mini journey. From A to midway, we want the velocity at the midway point, so that will be our V. How big is V? V squared is U squared, which is 10 squared, plus 2AS. Well, I don't know A and I don't know S, but 
but I do know 2a times half the distance, half of x, is 2a times 75 over a. Can you see what we've done? Instead of using s, I've used half of the value of x, and half of the value of x is 75 over a. So I've got 2a times 75 over a. And the a's cancel, and I end up with 100 plus 150. So v is the square root of 250, which is 15.8 meters per second, slightly more than half, uh, slightly more than the average speed. Why is that? Well, if I'd have asked you to work out the speed at the mid time when the time was halfway, that would have been 15 meters per second. But if we look at the graph showing velocity, not against time, but velocity against displacement, it will look like this. It's a parabola on its side, actually. The car would have started from rest at some point. By the time it reached point A, it was accelerating at 10, it had accelerated to 10 meters per second. And by the time it reached point B, its velocity would be 20 meters per second. And I hope you can see midway between A and B, the velocity is slightly more than 15 because of the curve shape. That's a difficult point. That's it. Let's just do a quick review of what we've been covering. One of the key points to remember is the SUVAT equations only apply to uniform, which means constant, acceleration can't use them if you're not going in a straight line or if your acceleration is changing. There are the four equations we've looked at. I put one of them in blue because it sometimes is omitted, but it's a very useful equation. Depends what book you're reading. It tells you the displacement is average velocity times time, which is a very useful relationship, even if it's not given in your book. And occasionally, some books include a fifth formula, which I haven't covered. It's very similar to the third one down, shown it in purple on the board, on the screen. Note, there are five variables, S, U, V, A, and T. If you know any three of them, you can find the other ones. For example, if you know V, U, and A, you can find T. If you know V, U and A, you can also find S. And it's a case of being familiar enough with the equations to know which one to use. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you know a bit more about the SUVAT equations. If you watch the videos on projectile motion, you'll find that they need knowledge of the SUVAT equations. So I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.